So now to our other top story of the night, some fireworks on Capitol Hill as lawmakers demanded answers from the top officials at the FBI and the Department of Justice. FBI Director Christopher Wray and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein fielded a series of pointed and fiery questions from House Republicans today trying to get to the bottom of how their agencies handled the Clinton email investigation and then subsequently the Russia probe that they began. Watch this. I am the Deputy Attorney General of the United States. Okay. You're the boss, Mr. Rosenstein. That's, that's correct. Why did you tell Peter Strzok not to enter our questions yesterday? But I didn't give Peter Strzok any instructions. Horowitz said his bias is the is an appropriate explanation for his conduct. Do you agree? I certainly agree with the findings of the Inspector General report, and I think those messages clearly do indicate bias. We need a date when you found out that the wife of your deputy was working for people who are actively trying to undermine President Trump. If you have evidence of wrongdoing by any member of the Trump campaign, present it to the damn grand jury. Whatever you got, finish it the hell up, because this country is being torn apart. Here now, Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates, among those demanding answers in that hearing today. Congressman, good to see you here in Florida. Good to see you. So uh, I watched as much as I could this morning before we started getting ready for the debate of this hearing, and it was, it was pretty heated in there. What do you think was accomplished today? We learned that Rod Rosenstein won't tell us whether or not he even read the FISA application that resulted in spying on officials associated with the Trump campaign. And I think there's a real transition that occurred today. This is going from just being Robert Mueller's probe to a probe that Rod Rosenstein is responsible for because he's ultimately who appointed Mueller. And so the staffing decisions that demonstrate bias, the accountability, kind of the cleanup of people like Peter Strzok and Lisa Page should fall to Rosenstein. And we didn't get the answers we wanted to. Today. Let's take a listen to uh, Representative Jordan. He's pressing Rosenstein over the releasing of documents, which I know has been top of mind for all of you. Watch this part. The House of Representatives is going to go on record saying you haven't complied with request from a separate and equal branch of government, that you haven't complied with subpoenas, and you got seven days to get your act together. And I want to know why you won't give us what we've asked for. Sir, I certainly hope that the, your colleagues are not under that impression. That is not accurate, sir. And you it is accurate. We have caught you hiding Mr. Chairman, can we Mr. allow Rosenstein. the witness to answer? I mean, how do you square that? Well, there have been a number of circumstances where we found documents that were responsive to the requests from Congress, but they weren't produced to us. So that was deeply troubling. Uh, also, I think you've seen Mr. Jordan's frustration bubble beyond just a small group of members on the Judiciary Committee to now the entire House of Representatives taking a vote and virtually every Republican saying, we do have a role for oversight. Rod Rosenstein has frustrated that oversight, and we want the documents in seven days. I mean, at the heart of what you are digging for is whether or not there was a political agenda in place to try to disrupt the Trump campaign. And whether or not some of these agents, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, took it upon themselves to try to instigate or set a pretext for investigating the Trump campaign. Did you get any further down that road today? Uh, I think both today and yesterday, particularly where we got the chance for the first time to interview Peter Strzok, we learned a lot more about the ways in which the bias not only existed, but it actually manifested in investigative decisions. The inspector general, a Democrat appointed by Barack Obama, even said that he could not rule out bias as the reason why the Hillary Clinton investigation was pushed aside and the Donald yeah. Trump Russia investigation was elevated beyond what the facts would have called for. Yeah, so, so the main question is whether or not these agents tried to figure out a way to sort of poke holes in the campaign, the mm -hmm. Trump campaign, to kind of put feelers out there and see if they put out that bait, would anybody bite? Would they say, you know, oh, sure, I'd love to hear some dirt on Hillary Clinton, and that possibly it's even been suggested that they would then be entrapped in mm -hmm. a situation where it appeared that they were doing something wrong. Is that what you believe happened? That's what the documents will show. Today, when I asked Rod Rosenstein if there was any intelligence collected on the Trump campaign before the George Papadopoulos report, yeah. he would not answer that question. Now, if the answer was no, he could have clearly said no. Instead, he said it's classified, which seems to suggest there's information there. There was intelligence collected on the Trump campaign, and, and that would indicate whether or not this was entrapment or baiting of some kind for political purposes. So what do you do next to get the answers to those questions? The question is whether or not our leadership, now having 
heard from the entire House of Representatives on this question. We'll say either the documents show up or we start the impeachment proceedings of Rod Rosenstein. And what about the president? Is there more that he could do? Well, you know, the president's in an awkward position here because I think the bias is reflected against him. The president could declassify documents from before the Papadopoulos report, uh, and that would tell us whether or not there was spying or intelligence collection on the Trump campaign, and I've encouraged the president to do that. Now, we saw Trey Gowdy encouraging them to come to some conclusion or to present evidence if they have it. What is your sense of the Mueller time frame right now? Well, we don't know it, and that's what's so troubling. I mean, we're almost two years into the Trump presidency. My goodness, if there was evidence of collusion, I think the country should see it. Unfortunately, uh, now we've got a circumstance where so many Americans are in doubt, but fewer and fewer. The latest CBS poll shows more than half the country does not approve of how Robert Mueller is, is handling the investigation. More than half the country also believes that the Mueller investigation is politically motivated, not based on the facts. We'll see what uh, Mr. Mueller comes up with and how it was it was carried out. Good to see you, Congressman. Hey, thank you, you very much. You did a great much. job moderating oh, that debate. Thank you. I think my man Ron DeSantis did a great job. It was an interesting night. We'll see how it plays out. Good to see you, sir. All right. Oh, you guys see those fireworks during the questioning of the deputy AG in that House hearing today? Rod Rosenstein has been overseeing the Russia investigation forever since Jeff Sessions' notorious recusal, and GOP lawmakers didn't hesitate to vent their frustrations with his handling of the probe. You wrote the memo saying that Comey should be fired, and you signed the FISA extension for Carter Page. So my question is to you, seems like you should be recused from this more so than Jeff Sessions, just because you were involved in making decisions affecting both prongs of this investigation. Why haven't you done that? Congressman, I, I can assure you that uh, it were appropriate for me to recuse I'd be more than happy. If you have evidence of wrongdoing by any member of the Trump campaign, present it to the damn grand jury. If you have evidence that this president acted inappropriately, present it to the American people. Whatever you got, finish it the hell up, because this country is being torn apart. I think the best thing we can do is finish it appropriately and reach a conclusion. And I certainly agree with you, sir. People should not jump to conclusions without seeing the evidence. Did you read the FISA application before you signed it? I'm not going to comment about any FISA so, application. So why are you keeping information from Congress? Congressman, I am not keeping any information from Congress that it's appropriate. You, your statement that I'm personally keeping information from you, trying to conceal information You're from You're the boss, people, Mr. Rosenstein. That's correct. And my job is to make sure that we respond to your concerns. We have, sir. So I appreciate your concerns. Again, I think so the House of Representatives is going to say otherwise. But your use of this to attack me personally why did you is completely wrong. Personal. You got seven days to get your act together. And I want to know why you won't give us what we've asked for. Sir, I certainly hope that the, your colleagues are not under that impression. That is not accurate, sir. And you it can... is accurate. We have caught you hiding Mr. Chairman, can we Mr. allow Mr. the witness to end? Anyone else get nervous during that exchange? I was very <laughs> uncomfortable. Joining me now for analysis, great panel, of course, Fox News contributor, former federal prosecutor Andy McCarthy, just wrote a great piece, by the way, former Whitewater Deputy Independent Counsel Saul Weisenberg, and former FBI National Spokesperson John Inarelli. Great to see all of you. Saul, let's start with you. You were annoyed by Jim Jordan's questioning, which you found to be badgering. And I gotta say, I was watching in my radio studio and I kind of winced because when you have to interrupt the witness, it makes, it makes your case not look that strong. Just let him answer the question, then have a, you know, have a, have a quick follow-up. But I think he's worried about not having enough time. They're, they have such limited amount of time that he probably got frustrated. But was that a fatal mistake on the part of Jordan? I don't think it's a fatal mistake. I just think he's, uh, you know, he went to school at the Teddy Kennedy School of Congressional Cross-Examination. You ask a hostile question and then you immediately interrupt the person that you're questioning. Uh, so my objection is not to the substance of what he asked. He's allowed to ask anything he wants. It's to, it is to the badgering. But the, the larger question here about this whole exercise of bashing Rosenstein is something that Andy uh, has spoken to several times in his columns, uh, Andy McCarthy, and spoke to it a couple of days ago. President Trump has the absolute authority to order Rod Rosenstein to turn over anything and everything to the Congress. And if he did it and Rosenstein didn't want to do it, he could resign. Or if he refused to do it, the president could fire him. Why hasn't he done that? Uh, let's ask Andy that. Andy, 
what's the delay? Why hasn't President Trump just said, turn the documents over? That's not prejudicing the case, or he doesn't look like he's defensive. Just, it's transparency. Why, why won't the president say to Rosenstein, enough of these continuing <laughs> resolutions that they keep passing that are meaningless in Congress? Yeah, they passed a resolution. Oh, we're compelling you to release a the document. They're not going to release the documents. That was clear today to me. So why, why won't the president demand that they be uh, finally released? Get this thing on the road. Show yeah, on the road. It's a great question, Lauren. I, I appreciate Saul bringing it up. Um, you know, the great irony, I thought, of the hearing was my friend Jim Jordan really laying into Rod Rosenstein saying, you're the boss, these people work for you. And the, you know, the elephant in the room is that Rosenstein works for Trump. And it, it, precisely the point you make is, is true. Trump can order this. So what we understand is that he's gotten advice. I don't think it's particularly good advice that because he's been under investigation for obstruction and because the uh, critics of Trump have conflated in the in the public mind the Republican Congress's pursuit of what went on with the agents who conducted these investigations and Mueller's investigation, that if Trump acts to force disclosure and help Congress here, he's effectively obstructing justice. Now, I, I think that's nuts. I don't see a legal obstruction case. I get it. Yeah. But I think that's where they're at. That's what they're worried about. John, um, th there were so many things in this hearing that were wild. One of them was when uh, he was asked, Rosenstein was asked, you know, what about this FISA warrant? And he wouldn't answer the question about whether he read it. And, he, and then he said, well, this, you know, Strzok didn't brief me, uh, and he went through the others. Moyers didn't brief me. But he wouldn't answer the question about, did, did you actually read this FISA warrant? And he kept saying, well, you basically don't understand. And I don't, I, I don't, uh, he also said, I don't supervise, you know, I, I have 100,000 employees. So he wasn't looking over the shoulder of Peter Strzok at every, every moment, but he said he wants to root out any corruption that's there. If he had read the warrant, he would have said, I read the warrant. He obviously didn't read the warrant or maybe glanced over it so long ago he can't remember the specifics, which is why he's not commenting. I'll tell you, this whole process is moving so incredibly slow. At this point, DOJ has to stop with the glacial performance and recognize the American people want to know what's going on. Speed it up already. Let's get the answers out there. And Trey Gowdy went just <laughs> crazy on that. He's like, get, he, didn't, he decided, Saul, not to ask a question but to take his time to make sure that he got, he got quoted and the soundbite was used on most evening newscasts and cable and all over media, social media today, get this thing wrapped up. What has taken so long? Give us the documents. Uh, and then there was a moment when Jordan was pressing another matter about Peter Strzok. I want to play it and have Saul's reaction. Let's watch. Why did you tell Peter Strzok not to enter our questions yesterday? When I asked... When I asked Peter Strzok if he'd ever communicated with Glenn Simpson, he gave us the answer he gave us dozens of times. On advice of FBI counsel, I can't answer that question. Why couldn't he answer that question? Mr. Jordan, I appreciate your sincere concerns, but I didn't give Peter Strzok any instructions. How do I know, sir? I mean, I, you interviewed Mr. Strzok. I didn't, uh, so I can't Works answer. Works for you. Doesn't work for us. So, um... I don't think Rosenstein came off well today at all. I thought he came off as very defensive, very flip, but he played the victim card. You're personally attacking me. You're mean to me in the media. Like, welcome to the big leagues, buddy. You know, you're deputy AG. It's pretty hot right now. Uh, but he, he kept saying, well, I, there's, there's all these people who work in the Department of Justice. This was the, the, this is the biggest case, the Russia case, but the Hillary email case. These two things dovetailed together because of this one agent. He had a duty to find out what happened. Well, you, keep in mind here, I, I, I think he, he, did, he did better than you think he did. But keep in mind uh, two really important things. I'm glad you focused on this because Rosenstein made two points. Uh, number one, I'm not the one and nobody at DOJ... Uh, as opposed to FBI, which is in the DOJ, but nobody in Rosenstein's shop told uh, Peter Strzok what to say or not to say. And also, he made it very clear he had nothing to do with the redactions, including this latest outrageous redaction that they didn't find out about until the inspector general's report came out about the will stop him. 
He didn't have anything to do with that. When he found out and when he was told there were redactions, he brought in this U.S. attorney from Chicago. But it brings up an interesting point. There appears that for many years, on and off, there's been a rogue element in FBI leadership that obstructs these kind of investigations. And obviously, it's outrageous that that uh, text message uh, was not sent to the Congress. And the question is, what's, uh, what's going to be done about it? Because I think DOJ should do something about that. Yeah, Andy, are there any repercussions for what was done? I mean, redacting, don't worry, basically, I'll take care of it, meaning he's, you know, he, it's, it's not going to be a problem. Trump's not going to be a problem. And that yeah, well, doesn't go to the Congress? Of, co of course. And, you know, this is the problem, I think, that Rosenstein has. I, I, I think, for example... I wondered if he had ever prepared a witness before, because a lot of times it seemed to me his answers were sensible, but the smirk on his face was really off-putting. But on this particular, he says that uh, he strongly supports the disciplining of agents who've committed misconduct. He endorsed uh, I.G. Horowitz's report. But, you know, you you got to put your money where your mouth is, and it, it's impossible to be credible yeah. and say at the same time, we're giving you all this cooperation, and when we find somebody who withholds stuff, we don't do anything to discipline them. Yeah, John, you know what? I, what I'm looking for for some of these officials, it, it, why isn't he angry about this? Like, he just, he seems it's all about him. Like, you're, again, you're mean to me, you were mean to me in the press, and their personal attacks. If this happened at the FBI, which it did, you had these people burrowed into the system who hated Trump, they wanted to make sure that Hillary didn't get, didn't, you know, didn't ultimately get prosecuted, and they were going to make sure by hell or high water that Trump was going to have problems. Why isn't this guy Rosenstein angry? I don't know because I'll tell you, in the FBI, I held a lot of leadership positions. No matter what somebody did underneath me, I'm the boss. I'm responsible for it, and you better believe I would have been angry after the fact when I confronted whoever did what. Yeah, it was just, it, the buck stops here? No, I guess not. It's like, oh, I have too many employees. Well, they let to... him out. They, they, let, they let Strzok out. Don't forget, a couple weeks ago, he was let out, escorted yeah, out of the office. It's about time. So, yeah, but oh he, still, he, he still works there, though. I mean, yeah. we don't know. I mean, it's not like he's gone. He's sort of over there. Yeah, like what? But he was moved to, like, human resources after the, the Lovebirds text Laura, came we out, need, Saul. we need human resources. Yeah, exactly. Okay, guys. Uh, this is uh, human resources. Yay. All right, guys. Thanks so much.